Yo, what up fam? Three Girl Travi back here for another one. Today, I'm gonna be smoking some ribs on Betty, my cheap offset smoker that I've modified a ton. Haven't used Betty in a while, uh, actually this entire year. So I'm really excited to use Betty, um, but we're gonna mix up the game a little bit. Uh, we're gonna be running that Pitmaster IQ 120 on this cheap offset smoker. Um, just, I've been using this one a lot lately, but it automates the stoking of the fire, keeps the pit at temp. You got your temperature probe right there leads back to the pit master whenever it detects if it needs to stoke the fire it will blow some air in here i'm going to be running the minion method once i get up to temp and put the meat on i'm going to throw these couple apple wood chunks and a couple hickories there but the idea here is to make this thing run at temp with minimal attention uh i'm guessing it's going to be able to keep it at temp but with this thing, man, this thing just wrecks charcoal. It burns through the stuff. Um, so I'm interested to see kind of how it handles um, that. So anyways, I'm gonna get the ribs ready. I'm gonna get lit, uh, get it ready to go. Okay, so the coals are lit. I'm gonna go ahead and dump them in, start the minion and uh, get the ding old pit master put on, the pit master IQ 120, set it on and uh, let it get up to temp before I throw those woods and that ribs on there. Let's go. Okay. Get my power turned on. Okay. Go ahead and this puppy boot up. Should be right at 250 already. Get it boots up. go it's 86 degrees in the pit right now because i haven't closed the lid yeah we're at 250. okay let's get this closed up all right i need to put some more gaskets on old betty here okay so we're at 88 it's gonna start cranking up there all right Catch you back in a minute, fam. Whoops, we're still getting up to temp, but I forgot to throw my stack extension on. All right, so here's the ribs. Uh, we're up to temp, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw these puppies on, get my wood thrown on real quick. And uh, then the real test will start. Pretty good to me. Go ahead and close her up. See you later, Ribby boys. Okay. Now, coal's looking good so far. Okay. Got my wood on and everything, and now it's trying. Or it's time to see uh, how this thing actually performs. I mean, the coal didn't look like it even had a dent in it so far. It's only been about 30 minutes, I guess, getting up to temp and everything. Uh, but anyways, yeah, we'll check back in in a while and, uh, and see what's going on. Okay, we're about an hour and a half in. I'm gonna go ahead and spritz real quick. Looking good. Temp did go up to like 260. That's fine. Uh, I'll, I'll trust it and let it do its thing. 
Uh, it should get back in business, but uh, I'll check it in another hour and a half, see how things are looking. All right, guys, so we're about three hours in. I was looking at the ribs. I'm starting to see some separation where the bones are starting to peel away a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap them. I'm only gonna wrap them for an hour. I think two hours is a little too much. Kind of overcooks them, makes that, that mushy kind of fall off the bone stuff that I'm not a huge fan of, but some people are. But you know, cook what you like. So anyways, I learned this little thing from Harry Sue. He recommended doing it this way to give you that even distribution, but just some brown sugar, classic. The butter, you do it on both sides. And I'm gonna go ahead, put these, and get those ribs pulled. Get loaded up a little more in there. Ugh. All right, meat gloves, activate. Very good. All right, I'm gonna wrap these up and I'm gonna throw them back on there for about an hour. I'm gonna take a look. They might be done by then, but then I'll take them out of the foil and then I'll uh, throw them back on for just like maybe 10 or 15 minutes to let the, the glazes harden on it. All right, let's load them back up. So this is the three hour marker. I'm not doing a three, two, one. Just because the ribs were kinda in that position where they're about halfway done, so. Anyways, I'll take these off in an hour probably, um, and uh, we'll go from there. But as far as the temp goes, it was hanging at 260 for a long time. I just I just let it go, whatever. Um, and it you know it would chill out a little bit and cool down, bop back down to 250. It's just you know this is cheap grill, so like it's not insulated or anything. Um, it's kind of weird, but I am impressed with how well it's holding it. Uh, let's look at our fuel. It's been three hours. Okay, I'm looking like, uh, I'm guessing maybe two more hours on that. Maybe three, we'll see. I'm guessing now, but we'll see. Anyways, all right, catch you later. Okay, so it's been an hour that they've been wrapped in foil. And take a look at them. Whew. Looking good, fam. Nice and juicy looking in there. Ah, uh, yeah. Separation on the bones. I'm gonna poke at these a little bit just to see probe tenderness. Let's see. Pretty, pretty good feeling. Yeah. Okay, I would say these are getting pretty close to done. I'm gonna go ahead and do the bin test on them. Yeah. Almost, not quite cracking. But I am gonna uh, put them back on the, the smoker for a second. Now we're about four hours and 15 minutes in. Let's take a look at our coal. Dwindling. Dwindling. Not sure how many more hours left in that thing, but we'll get them, we'll get these ribs done in time, but probably five hours on uh, 16 pounds of coal. <laughs> All right. All right, about four and a half hours in. I uh, unwrapped them after having them in full for about an hour. Do the bin test. Yeah, these are done. Yep, that is a done rack of ribs right there. Very good. Okay, so I'm gonna dress these up in barbecue sauce now. And uh, yeah, we'll be done. Got some Trayvon Diggs pick and dip barbecue sauce, Dallas Sweet Heat. Just a little, just 
like to start small. All right, I'm gonna let this sauce sit and then we'll be done. Okay, so the ribs turned out great. Uh, I think that they were cooked extremely well. Betty is such a good cooker. Uh, she just got good, you know, uh, flow. You know what I'm saying with the 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 uh, heat and everything. Good distribution of heat she always has. And since I made all the modifications and everything, um, but yeah, she's still super hungry for the charcoal, um, like most uh, cheap offset, cheaper offset uh, smokers are. Um, that's just because they have thinner metal uh, for the most part. You're losing a lot of heat through the metal, just seeping out. Um, but any matter, the Pitmaster IQ did hold the temp in a acceptable temperature range the entire time, so it was really hands off. Um, I was just checking a lot, just you know, monitoring the process. Uh, it, it held it between 250 and 260. Obviously, the temperature would drop whenever it opened the, the lid up, um, but then it would quickly bounce back in. Uh, to that 250, 260 range, um, and it held that way for five hours. So that's 16 pounds of charcoals uh, for five hours. Uh, while these ribs only took about four hours and 20, or four hours and 30 minutes, um, the coals are gonna go to at least five hours and they'll probably start to dwindle down. Um, if I wanted to keep the cook going, I would just dump more charcoal in. Um, however, you know, running an offset like that, it, it can be quite expensive. Um, if you go with a Smoky Mountain or something, you could use a little bit less charcoal than that uh, and then go for like, you know, 12, 16, 18 hours. It's ridiculous how much more efficient like a Smoky Mountain is um, in comparison. However, the point being, the Pitmaster makes this thing a lot less laborsome. Yeah. More hands off, uh, you can kind of set it and forget it. I mean, just keep an eye still. Um, but yeah, it worked out great. I'm very pleased with the results and these ribs are fantastic and they smell delicious and I can't wait to eat them. Thanks for watching guys. All right guys, so here's the finished product there. Uh, it's not falling off the bone. I didn't want that. I wanted to leave a bite mark uh, once I bite into this bone here. It's something to chew on. Uh, I'm feeling really good about it so far. Just looking at it, examining the smoke ring and stuff. The bark's really good and it's got a nice tackiness to the barbecue sauce and stuff, but looks like it came out great, guys. Mm. My goodness. There's your bite mark. That's what I was going for, guys. That's, uh, that's what they look for. Oh man, it's super tender, it's juicy, it's tasty as a, a dead gum bugger. Uh, I think we did it a good, uh, or I think we did it again, and I, I think we did it right. Uh, so, uh, dead gummy! <laughs>